Good evening. I'd like to introduce the uh, dinner speaker. Shortly, we're going to have dessert served, and, and I'm sure you'll continue to eat quietly while we listen to our wonderful uh, dinner speaker. We're very lucky this evening to uh, have Fred Barnes come up from Washington to uh, talk to us this evening. So it's my privilege, privilege to uh, give a short introduction here. Fred Barnes is co-founder and executive director of the Weekly Standard. From 85 to 95, he served as senior editor and White House correspondent for the New Republic. He covered the Supreme Court and the White House for the Washington Star before moving on to the Baltimore Sun in 1979. He served as the national political correspondent for the Sun and wrote the Press Watch media column for the American Spectator. From 98 to 2009, he was host, along with Mort Kondraki, of the Beltway Boys on Fox News. And Mr. Barnes appears regularly on Fox's special report with Brett Byer. From 1988 to 1998, he was a regular panelist on the McLaughlin Group. He has also appeared on Fox News Sunday, CBS This Morning, Nightline, Meet the Press, Face the Nation, The News Hour with Jim Lehrer, and The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. In addition, Barnes hosts Issues in the News on Voice of America. Formerly, he was chief correspondent on the PBS series National Desk and host of What's the Story on Radio America. Mr. Barnes authored the book Rebel in Chief, Inside the Bold and Controversial Presidency of George W. Bush. That was in 2006. And it was based on his exclusive interviews with top administration officials as well as President Bush. Over the years, he has written for uh, Reader's Digest, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, that's where I usually read him. Uh, the Spectator, Washingtonian, The Public Interest, Policy Review, both the Sunday Telegraph and Sunday Times of London. The Media Guide has given Barnes four stars, its highest rating, and called him a great political reporter and columnist whose material is exquisitely timed. Mr. Barnes graduated from the University of Virginia and was a Neiman Fellow at Harvard University. Thank you again, Fred, for coming up today to speak to us. Thank you, Forrest. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, it was fun coming up here. I'm, uh, I always like getting out of Washington. Remember Ronald Reagan used to refer to Washington as a, an island surrounded on all sides by reality. <laughs> and that's uh, every year it seems to get more true, particularly uh, this year. But I'm delighted to be at Eastern University and, and particularly at this uh, Lincoln seminar put on by the Templeton Honors Program, which I've heard a lot about today. Uh, the program, which really sounds like a, a wonderful program, uh, and I just hope you all can enlarge it. If something like this were around when my kids were going to college and I knew about it, though, you know, one of the problems now in, in where your kids go to college is uh, they have a lot, a lot more to say about it than their parents do. So my three daughters went to the University of Virginia, and that saved me a lot of money since I live in Virginia. But uh, um, I had hoped that several of my kids would go to, actually I tried to encourage my son to go to a Christian college, you know, Division Three. he could play lacrosse. He went to Auburn. Uh, he, he said he wanted to go to a Division I school. There's more Christians at Auburn than there are at Christian colleges. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> said by an Auburn grad. But you, but you know what? That's true. That, uh, that's probably true. There are some public universities, and Auburn is one, it's in Alabama, where the Christian community is, uh, is really a dominant force on the campus. Unfortunately, my son was not greatly involved <laughs> in that, but, but, he, had, but he, enjoyed, he enjoyed fraternity life uh, very much there. Now, I'm going to talk about Lincoln's legacy, but <clears throat> there's one thing that I really don't need to make clear because it'll become obvious pretty soon. I am not a Lincoln scholar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I heard some cheers. Uh, there are some great Lincoln scholars, including here, and there'll be some uh, uh, tomorrow as well. I've read many of their books. Uh, I've enjoyed them a lot. I'm a great fan of Abraham Lincoln. If Abraham Lincoln had a, a, a Facebook a, a page, I'd be a friend. <laughs> if, he, uh, if he tweeted, uh, I'd be a follower. The, uh, I, am a, I do tweet, actually, but... Uh, <clears throat> 
the uh, it's a way to spread the uh, both the good news and the bad news. The uh, but in any case, uh, you know, it is amazing to me, not being a scholar, uh, how lively the interest in Abraham Lincoln is today. How lively the debates are over what about in his life, uh, well, which stories are true and which are not true. Did he really have this, this uh, tragic romance with Ann Rutledge? I, I certainly don't know. <laughs> Matt, what do you think? Uh, he doesn't know either. The, uh, uh, and there are all these incredible disputes. In fact, uh, you know, there are a couple of them that I've just learned more about. One of my favorite Lincoln stories, which I first read in a book called Reveille in Washington. It's a, the best book that has ever been written about Washington. It's about Washington during the Civil War. It came out in 1941, uh, and it's still a great book. Uh, and it's a, a, a story about, <clears throat> in the July of 1864, Lincoln went out to Fort Stanton, which is not far, uh, uh, which is now a park in Washington, but it's not uh, that far, a mile or two from the White House, uh, to see Jubal, Ar Jubal Early and his Confederate army go by. Uh, and the story is that Lincoln's there looking out, uh, standing up, and a young captain in the army yells at him, get down, you fool! And it was Oliver Wendell Holmes. Uh, that's the story. Well, when I read Tried by War, uh, James McPherson's book uh, about Lincoln uh, as, a, as a war president, he raised doubts about it. Those doubts have been confirmed <laughs> for me tonight when I mention it to uh, Matt Pinsker. Uh, so I guess it's apocryphal. What a great story, though. <laughs> the, uh, the, I, hate to, I hate to let that one go. <clears throat> Where I live, the Civil War and Lincoln is everywhere. I live in Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, and, and in Alexandria, you know, Washington, Lincoln was justifiably concerned about protecting Washington from the Confederate Army. And so 36 forts were, were built around Washington. I once had to explain this to George W. Bush, who for some reason didn't know about that. Uh, and he does read some history books. The, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, and I lived, when I grew up in Arlington, I lived right near Fort Marcy. And I live in Alexandria now, and it's right near Fort Ward. And one of the other forts was Fort Stanton, uh, uh, 36 forts. They're, they're everywhere. Uh, tomorrow, the reason I'm leaving tonight after, afterwards and can't stay over is I'm going to a football game at the University of Virginia. And when I drive down there, I'll drive down and pick up uh, one of my best friends at Fredericksburg, where, of course, the famous Battle of Fredericksburg, a big loss for the Union forces. And then we'll drive on Route 3 right, right through Chancellorsville, where the Battle of Chancellorsville was, another, another Union defeat. And I think the result of both of those was that generals were replaced by Abraham Lincoln. Certainly, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, um, Burnside, General Burnside after Fredericksburg, and maybe Joe Hooker after, after Chancellorsville. I may, I may have that wrong. Have I got that right? You are an historian. Hey, yeah. <laughs> good for me. I'm, well, uh, at least I got those right. The, uh, uh, anyway, you know, my uh, George Bush uh, once told this story at his, uh, when was this? This was before 9-11. He'd been president about six or eight months. And he was giving a speech in Washington, and he said uh, that he would explain to everybody exactly how it is that he was able to win elections. He said he had a very simple strategy. It was, his strategy was, uh, you can fool some of the people all of the time, and he concentrated on those people. <laughs> George Bush was obviously uh, uh, making a, uh, a reference in that story to the line attributed to Abraham Lincoln that we've all heard. You know, you can fool some of the people all of the time and all of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Now, my friend Andy Ferguson at the Weekly Standard, who's written a Lincoln book, says Lincoln never said that. There, he never, here we have it, he's never said that. That's my second favorite uh, uh, Lincoln story. That, and, uh, and that one, anyway, Lincoln, the reason we know all this is because Lincoln is so endlessly fascinating and so endlessly looked into by scholars who write about Lincoln in such wonderful ways. I have never read an uninteresting book about Lincoln, and I've read, I've read many. That's the, the extent of my scholarship, uh, uh, to have read a bunch of books. And, and uh, particularly about Lincoln, you know, when I, where I live in Virginia, Northern Virginia, it's, this isn't even a conservative area now, but, but think of the names of the high schools around there. There's not a Lincoln High School. Not far from my house is a Jeb Stewart High School. There's a Robert E. Lee High School. 
There's a Stonewall Jackson High School. A little farther away, there's a John Mosby High School. Uh, well, these were all high schools named, you know, 30, 40 years ago. I guess with political correctness, you couldn't, you couldn't name uh, uh, schools anymore uh, after Confederate generals. Uh, and yet, uh, the names have lasted. Alexandria, Virginia, if you drive down right through, right through the middle of the town, and, they, and you have to drive around it, because on Washington Street, you have to drive around this statue of a Confederate soldier. I've just sort of waited for the day when there would be a protest in the town, and they would say, we have to take down this statue of this Confederate soldier, but we haven't. It's still there.